Yeah, praise the Lord. Well, I just want to put one more plug in for our uh, vacation Bible school starting on July the 15th. It's an evening Bible school, uh, vacation Bible school from the July 15th through the 19th. Children 6 to 12, if you have children or grandchildren in that age group, we'd love to have them. Uh, if you want to take a look uh, after service, walk through our children's department and see the work that's been done. It's really very creative, really very nice, and so we'd really like to invite your children to be part of that. Uh, we say 6 to 12, if you've got some 5-year-olds that are, that are, you know, pretty well behaved, then, you know, we can, we, you know, not going to cry because mom is not there, uh, then, then bring them. And uh, I believe they'll be all right. Amen. Uh, if you have your Bibles with you, we're going to turn to the book of John, chapter 8. And uh, we're going to get there in just a little bit. You know, this weekend, we're, we're celebrating the, uh, the, I guess they call it the birth of our nation, uh, the signing of the Declaration of Independence. July 4th was on Thursday. We had an opportunity to meet with, have my, my kids over. We went over to Belinda's younger sister's house and had some, uh, you know, some hamburgers and the kids swam. And, you know, it's just kind of a time of, uh, of, of fun and games and, and connecting with family. And that's, that's what we do uh, at that time. But, you know, I got to thinking a little bit. You know, the, the most precious uh, pursuit our endeavor by humanity, by a human being, is to be free, is to live free, to have freedom. It is the pursuit of every person on planet Earth. There's this something on the inside of us that wants to be free. And so we celebrate that, that signing of the Declaration of Independence. And uh, that weekend, 56 or that week, that day, 56 or 57 men signed a declaration saying we will no longer serve the tyranny of the King of England. We will no longer be servants to them. We want representation with the taxation. We are no longer going to serve the King of England. And they make this statement of the second statement of the Declaration of Independence. And I think it's something that we need to repeat. It says, we hold these truths to be self-evident. That all men, all men are created equal. That they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights. That among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. There are some similarities with uh, this uh, national freedom to what I would call biblical and spiritual freedom. When we recognize that the government was established, it could have been. Uh, easily 13 different countries succeeding or seceding from the rule of, the, of the, the, the government of England or the King of England. But these men bound together and they formulated a constitution, a constitution which gives us liberties, gives us freedoms, gives us rights, gives us social freedom. That social freedom is simply this, that I can live wherever I want to live. I'm not bound by living in a specific place. I have freedom of speech. I can say what I want to say. I can speak my mind, and that's the, the, the first one. There is freedom of religion. I can belong to whatever religious organization I want to belong to, any religious denomination I want to belong to, and I don't have to belong to any if I don't want to. It's freedom of religion. There is freedom to bear arms. I like what one person put on Facebook. He said, we celebrate today because that back then everybody owned guns. And so we recognize that is, that's a freedom that we have. There is political freedom. Now, if you're waiting for a spiritual message, it's coming. Just hold on. There's political freedom. You know, I can belong to any party I want to belong to. I don't have to belong to any party if I don't want to. I can vote for whomever I want to vote. That I have the right to vote 
So that someone who has my ideology is running for a political office, I can vote for them and I should vote for them. I should exercise that right to vote. It is imperative that we do that. I can belong to any political party that has my ideology. We hear a lot of noise between the Republicans and the Democrats. But what you don't know is that there's probably 15 other parties out there that will have a president on the ballot when the time comes in 2020. There will be someone from the Libertarian Party, someone from the Communist Party, someone from the Marxist Party, someone from just about just everything. You can belong to any of that. That is your right. There's economic freedom. I can choose any occupation I want to. If I don't like what I'm doing, I can get retrained and do something else. I can spend my money the way I want to spend my money. I, 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 I encourage you not to spend all your money or overspend your money. But, but realize that we can do that if we want to. We are guaranteed opportunity, but we're not guaranteed results. Now the challenge is that the government is supposed to provide a legal system by which if anyone transgresses or overruns my freedoms, then they have to pay some consequences. If someone steals my stuff, there's a legal system in place that they should be penalized for doing that. And so that's the government responsibility, is to put all those things there. But there is a freedom that transcends uh, social, political, and economic freedoms. It is spiritual freedom. You can be... Uh, politically free, economically free, and socially free, and still be under the bondage of darkness and evil so that you cannot physically or emotionally or mentally exercise and enjoy the freedoms that you have. But at the same time, you can be spiritually free and live under the most oppressive government, the most oppressive situation, and still have joy unspeakable and full of glory because you've made Jesus the Lord of your life. You might have some physical, some economic, and some, some difficult uh, areas to live in. There are some of those places in our country, but there are some of those places throughout the world, and yet people People who make Jesus the Lord of their life can live with that joy and that peace within them even though there's some spiritual op some, some some natural oppression happening in their life the challenge is that I have to balance the spiritual freedom with the natural freedom you see, the Bible tells us in, Romans, um, in John chapter 8 that if the Son sets you free, then you're free indeed. Now, it doesn't mean that I'm free to do anything and everything that I want to do. It actually means that I am free to live out the life that God intended for me to live. For me to fulfill a plan that's greater than my plan, that's greater than who I am, it is something that it, it begins with, uh, with, uh, with a new birth. The Constitution was established by these uh, few men so that our nation would have one set of laws that would govern the whole nation. Each state has various, uh, various laws and uh, certain things because of their location and the people, but there's an overriding law called the Constitution. The believers, the Christians, have an overriding constitution that we have the laws and the direction and the controls put in place so that we can live the life God wants us to live free from hatred, free from bondage, free from sin, free from guilt, free from shame, free from Satan, free from the control of the enemy. And that's the Bible. And so, real biblical freedom 
is to determine uh, a, 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 a set of moral principles so that I choose to live by those principles. Now, we call this declaration of independence. And as I was meditating on that this week, I, I believe, began to see that you and I, as, as believers, as, as children of God, need to have a regular declaration of our independence. But when we make a declaration of independence, we're simultaneously making a declaration of dependence. And so how does that work? Well, let me explain it. I need two volunteers. Brother John, come stand right over here. And, and uh, well, you don't look like much the part, but come on, uh, Brother uh, um, or Arnold, come on. I'm sorry, your, your, your name. Uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm going to explain why you don't look much the part in just a minute. There's, there's a story that Jesus gave in Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 15, rather. You're familiar with the prodigal son. Uh, and, and so I want to I demonstrate what the prodigal son did. Now this is the prodigal son's father. He is benevolent. He is wise. He is kind. He is generous. And he loves his sons. He's got two sons. The youngest son, we don't know how old he is. I'm thinking he's probably a millennial. A millennial. He's probably in the age of about, oh, maybe late teens, early 20s. And he sees his father's house rules. How many of you have house rules? You know, uh, uh, you ought to if you don't. He sees his father's house rules as controlling, as, as overbearing. I want to do what I want to do. When I want to do it, I don't want to have a curfew. I don't want to do, I, I, I don't want to clean the dishes. I don't want to take care of my room. I don't want to cut the grass. I don't want to do those things. I want freedom and I can't wait to get out of the house so I can be free. Have you ever heard that? Maybe you thought that way at one time. And so he says to the father, he makes a declaration of independence. Give me my inheritance and I'll be out of your hair. You won't have to deal with me. I'm tired of your laws and your rules and your controlling. And so the father, brokenhearted, gives him his inheritance. And he goes out. Now he has made a declaration of independence from his father. But now he has also simultaneously made a declaration of dependence upon his skills, his education, his talents, his good looks, his charm, his personality and his strength. And he's made all of this. He's, he's declared, I am the center of my universe. And so he walks out of the, of, of the accountability of his father onto a realm of autonomy. Now autonomy is simply this. I can go where I want. I can do what I want. I can live how I want. Anytime I want without accountability to anybody else. And so we know the story. It led him to some irresponsibility. It led him to squander his money. He was, he was counting and relying upon that inheritance to take care of him and to be his investment so that he could make a living and show up his father. Well, we know what happened. It wound up in disaster. So now he's, he's no longer feels like he can go back to his father. But he's, he's, uh, then he finds someone. Uh, one of the translations says, and he forced himself on a... See, Mr. Mr. Arnold, don't look much like a pig farmer. Uh, 
<laughs> but he's a businessman, okay? So, so he doesn't deal with the pigs. He doesn't smell like a pig. Uh, he, he's, he, but he's the pig farmer. He, he's the businessman who has people working for him. And so he attaches himself. Now what has he done? He has pronounced a declaration of independence from his father. But all of a sudden he makes a declaration of dependence and reliance upon this man. Now, now, now what makes that so bad? It's not like jumping from Ford Motor Company to General Motors. It's not like jumping from, from uh, 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 w w one business to another business that's equal. He is a Hebrew. He is a Jew. He has never tasted pork. He has never had anything to do with pork. That is an awful business. It is an unclean animal. It is something that he would never in his wildest dreams, his wildest nightmares ever think I would be serving and, and, and working with pigs. And yet he has lowered himself to that place in his life where he had no other option. And now he is bound there's a bondage that has taken place because of his declaration of independence. There has also simultaneously been a declaration of dependence. And he says, and he longed even just to eat what the pigs were eating. I don't know about you, but I've seen what pigs eat. <laughs> I can't imagine even thinking that. And yet he was that hungry. But thank God, he, the word says, he came to his senses. And when he came to his senses, all of a sudden, he starts thinking about the benevolence of his father. The graciousness of his father. The kindness of his father. And he longed to be back and he came back to him. And, and I believe then he made, now he made another declaration of deep independence. Say, adios, Jack. Or he did like that little girl. You know, you've seen that commercial where the little lady, she's deciding she's going to open up her own bakery. And she brings a cake to her boss. And it says, she puts it on his desk and says, I quit. That was a declaration of independence. I thought, that's bold. <laughs> But she said, I quit. And so he goes back and he says, Father, suddenly your, 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 your rules aren't so bad. Suddenly your control isn't so difficult. Suddenly that even in those controls and your, 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 your accountability over me, even in that I have I don't, I see the freedom that I had that I didn't recognize that, that, that are still there. And, and yet, I don't even count it worthy to be considered your, 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 your son. But if you'll just let me be your servant, even your servants have a place to live and they have food on the table and they have money in their pocket. And even your servant can, 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 can be blessed and gracious under your care. Would you let me back in? Would you take me back? And the father said, man, kill the fatted calf. My son was dead. Now he's alive. There's a whole lot in that story. But I want, what I want you to see is that as, as a believer, as a Christian, when we make a declaration of independence from the devil, you can't just make a declaration from him because then you take on the responsibility of leading your own life, directing your own life. And listen, I don't know about you, but you are. Not, I am not as smart as the devil. I am not as smart to be able to run and control my life and every decision. I need the Holy Spirit. I need to, to be dependent upon something that's bigger and greater and wiser than me. Amen. Give Brother John and Brother Arnold a, a, a hand clap. Does that, does, that, does that show you a picture that you see what we have the, uh, uh, but, but we have a, uh, uh, boy you know I don't want to, I, I believe it's a problem. 
You know, in our culture, in our society, this politically correct society that's looking for inclusion of every type of lifestyle, every type of behavior, you have to include them. Every type of belief, every type of, uh, of, of thing, you have got to, you have got to uh, accept all of that. There is this inclusion and, and we have to accept all this diversity. The problem that I see is that the, the this culture is pushing for inclusion of every deviant behavior and yet when you say that I'm a believer I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and I'm a Christian oh no you're not welcome see there's something wrong with that picture and so we've got to be careful that we don't, uh, uh, under, we, we don't allow ourselves to look at autonomy as a true freedom but rather, true freedom is simply this, one who accepts an a, 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 a absolute set of moral principles, moral and ethical principles, an absolute set of those principles and those regulations, and then says, I will live according to those regulations and those rules and those, and those uh, um, uh, dictates, and I will be accountable to that. And when I do that, then I can live out and uh, live out the, my life in freedom because for the believer the Bible is that set of rules and is that set of principles is that set of ethical standards by which the Bible calls me to live in fact the Bible calls me to live by a standard called wait for it love the underlying principle and moral and ethical standard that we're called to live by is that law of love. And when I do that, when I live by that principle, that law of love, then I can, I can, I can resist the devil and he's going to flee. I can resist his attacks against my life and he's going to flee. I, when I live by that, by, by that set of principles, I, I declare my trust, my alliance, my dependence upon a greater one than me. When I do that and I choose to say, now God, I am going to do all that I can within my power to live within that structure of what you said. Now, because I'm human, I might miss it. But Paul says, says this in, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. It's an interesting statement. He says, all things are lawful for me. All things are lawful for me. Now, I don't know about you, but that seems to tell me that anything he wanted to do, he could do it. But... He said, because all things are, off, are, are lawful, not all things are helpful. Not all things are good. Not all things are expedient. Though all things are lawful, I will not be brought under the power of any of those things. In other words, there are some things, yeah, you can go ahead and do it, but if, you, if you're not careful, you'll be like the prodigal son and wind up in bondage to the thing that you thought the freedom that you have allowed you to do. So God says that I'm not putting these controls over you to keep you from having fun. I'm keeping, I'm putting these controls and these, these principles in place to keep you from winding up in bondage. Because he knows that doing dope is going to get you addicted. He knows by, uh, by overindulging in alcohol will get you addicted. He knows that, that sleeping around will cause something else, some, some kind of disease to come on you. And it'll, it'll wear, it'll tear at your soul. He knows that bondages are out there waiting for people to fall in place for them. And so he said, I'm not doing this to keep you from having fun. I'm not doing this to keep you, to, 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 to control you. I'm doing this to let you know how much I love you. But we also realize because we're human, we can miss it. 
But thank God, God's not just throw, kicking us under the bus or kicking us to the curb when we miss it. What He simply says this, He said, if you confess it and you repent of it, then I am faithful, I am just, and I'll cleanse you of all that stuff. But not only will I cleanse you, I will empower you not to fall into that bondage again. Not to fall into that area again. And so when I try to live by the biblical standard of, of love, and I'm doing the best that I know how to do, and I'm repenting when I, when I miss it, when I confess when I miss it, then I can, I can call upon God. Listen, some of us have been in some dire situations, some very difficult places in our life. And the God says, if you call upon me, I will deliver you. I mean, I, I don't want to show of hands, but I know that many of us have been in places where, where if it were not for God, we might still be in those places. Whether it be, whether it be in bondage physically or whether it be in bondage emotionally, we'd still be in those places. Thank God He delivers us. I can proclaim when I'm living according to that, I can proclaim that no weapon formed against me shall prosper because there's a protection that comes with serving God and living right. I can declare that by His stripes I'm healed and then experience that healing. I can declare that by that my God shall supply all my needs and have the, my needs supernaturally met. Sometimes it's, sometimes it's supernatural. Sometimes it looks like it just, he just gave you extra hours at work. Or sometimes he just gave you a bigger, better job. Or sometimes you just got a raise. Just looked like it was really natural. And all the time behind the scenes, God was working and causing those things to happen so that your needs would get met. You know, I tell you, one of the, one of the passage of scriptures that Pastor B and I have lived upon uh, for, for all our 43 years of being born again. We've been married almost uh, 47 years, uh, but for, for the 43 years that we've been born again, Romans 8, 28 has been our, our, our go-to verse. God works, to, God works together in all things for our good to those who are called by His purpose. And there's so many times in our life, in our ministry, and with our kids, we just say, God, we don't know how you're going to do it, but this is going to work out to our advantage. We declare that our advantage will come about. We declare that you are working behind the scenes, working this thing out for our good. Amen. And so you got to know that if you're doing what the Word says and living according to the Word, then you can make some declarations. I believe we need to make some declarations every day. I believe we need to celebrate this freedom. We, we need to not, uh, yeah, we need to understand that we, we, we made Jesus the Lord of our life. We need to choose each day to walk in this freedom. To walk in the freedom that the Word has for us. And Galatians chapter 5 verse 1 says that we are to stand fast in the freedom which, which Christ has, made, has bought and made us free. In other words, I, I've got to recognize that I'm led by the Holy Spirit. And if I, if I miss it, then I need to confess it and repent of it. I need to turn around and turn and go in a different direction so that I don't keep going in a specific direction that will wind up in my bondage. And so I walk in that liberty and I walk in that freedom. Romans chapter 6, Paul says that sin should not have dominates, domination over us should not dominate us, should not have dominion over us. And sometimes we miss it, sometimes we sin, but it should not have dominion over us. We endeavor not to sin, we endeavor not to miss the mark, but when we do, we recognize that God is faithful. He's just, His wisdom is, ex is extraordinary. His grace and His mercy are all that we rely upon on. When I make a declaration of independence from the devil, I'm making a declaration of dependence upon God's grace, upon His love, upon His wisdom, upon His guidance, upon His protection, upon the Holy Spirit guiding and directing me. And so when I do that, then, then, then I stand at liberty. I stand in that place of freedom 
to fulfill the plan that God has for my life. Amen. Galatians chapter 5, verse 13, he says, Do not let your liberty be a, an opportunity for the flesh. In other words, just don't let yourself do anything you think you ought to do if it's not in the realm of Scripture, if it's not biblically correct, then, then stay away from it. It's pretty much that simple, not letting our flesh dominate. And so we celebrate freedom. Fourth of July, you know, we had a, a little barbecue. They swam, had some fun, and, and so forth. We have family gatherings, and, and all of those things are fun. Maybe you had something with your family and extended family. Maybe you didn't do much. Maybe you just stayed at home and, and just had a quiet day, enjoyed your day off because, you know, because of the heat, you just wanted to stay in and, and not get too involved. And that's fine. The challenge uh, for us is that we must never, ever forget the cost of that freedom. And, and, and I, I don't like to use the word fear, but I'm concerned that some in our culture, some in our, in our society, have forgotten the cost of our freedom. And, and, and my concern is this, that if we forget the cost of our freedom and we try to erase all of our history because some of it may not have been popular, some of it may not have been good, if we try to erase all of it, then we'll never learn from those experiences. If we try to, if we forget the cost of our freedom, then we are one step closer to losing it. And that's a concern. That I have. Oh, maybe not for me. I'm 67 years old. I'm going to be around for a little while. But I'm concerned for my, my granddaughter. And your grandkids. And your great grandkids. That they might not see the America that we see. Or have the freedoms that we have. Because a small group of people has endeavored to steal our freedoms. And wipe away our history. So that we cannot see those things and the mistakes that we made in the past. So that we don't make those same mistakes in the future. from a Christian's perspective. If we forget the cost of our spiritual freedom, we're one step closer to losing that spiritual freedom. If we forget that it cost the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, if we forget that it cost a sacrifice of enormity, one person for all humanity. If we forget the sacrifices that were paid and made for us as believers, as Christians, then we are in danger of losing those freedoms to be all that God intends for us to be. The Word says that when the Lord brought back the captivity from Zion, we were like those who dreamed and laughter filled our mouth and we sang. I believe that we, as a, as, as a, a nation, a Christian nation, should recognize that the freedoms we, that exist in the natural are also uh, related because of our forefathers' principles in the realm of the Spirit. And that they put things in order so that we would be right, not only for each other, but before God. And that people from diverse backgrounds and diverse ethnicities and, and diversities can come together and, and live in unity because of a sp simple constitution. I believe that if, if we forget that, then we're in danger of losing all that was built for us, for the next generations. And so we celebrate the 4th of July, and I think if you celebrate it, great. If you don't, then that's okay too. But I believe this morning, I felt like this morning is, a, is not just a celebration of our national freedom, but a celebration of our spiritual freedom. And that we're going to celebrate by, by, by taking communion together. 
Amen. That, that uh, all that I ask is that if you're a member of the body of Christ, if you made Jesus the Lord of your life, then you're welcome to receive communion with us. If you haven't, then I'll ask you to make Jesus the Lord of your life this morning so that you can receive communion with us. This is not, uh, we're, we're not separating people. It's just, we're, we're just saying that you don't have to be a part of this church to make to, to receive communion with us. We just ask that you be our brother and sister in Christ. Amen. And so if you're here this morning, you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, and you'd like to receive communion and celebrate that spiritual freedom, would you lift your hand and I'll, and I'll pray with you. Anybody like that here? Thank you, Father.